Hey folks, David Stewart here. So what we're gonna be doing on today's video is we are going to be designing a book cover. This is a very simple type of design that I call a central object design. It is appropriate for fantasy, for certain science fiction subgenres, and could even be used for something like a thriller if you frame the image right. So the whole point of this particular approach to designing a book cover is rather than using a central image and a bunch of auxiliary elements to convey genre and a little bit of what's in this story, you're instead going to focus just on one object and have the auxiliary elements be either not present or be very minimal. And that object and the type facing that you're going to use uh, for the title and for the author that's what you're going to rely on to communicate genre and uh, to set up the correct reader expectations. So for this one, because it's really popular in fantasy, I thought we'd just go fantasy and we'd do one with a sword. So one of the things you can do on a stock photo website is just search sword and you see lots of great pictures of swords that are either on a white background, which is very easy to blend out and cut out, or they're you know, absent a background, which is also good. These are great because you can just put these on a book cover in a bunch of different ways to create the image that you want. And in some cases you already have uh, composites done for you by, you know, graphic artists that are good at this. So you have a sword with some fire. So if you want an auxiliary element that is fire, this would be a good one. And this hilt looks very similar to say, uh, Aragorn sword in Lord of the Rings. So if you wanted that, uh, this is a very fantasy looking sword hilt right here. Um, and you could also just use a portion of a sword as well. You could have a sword in the cover or just the hilt. And so what I thought we would do today, I already licensed this image. Uh, I thought we'd use this one right here, which is a cross hilted sword um, with a little bit of an auxiliary element here in the form of some sparks that have been, have been added in. Uh, so we won't have to deal with you know, drawing in sparks or figuring out brush tools and different filters to create sparks. The sparks are already there and that's enough of an auxiliary element that we can uh, we can use this for our book cover. So we're gonna grab a picture of the sword and then we're going to, um, we're gonna create a new Photoshop document. So for this, we're gonna do it in five by eight. Now you could do it in six by nine if you wanted to. For what I've been doing on the right stream, I've been doing five by eight stuff. So five by eight is gonna be appropriate. That's the smaller size here. It's gonna be appropriate for um, shorter books, like what I've been showing how to do the, these more of these mini novels that are that are fairly short rather than like big tomes. Um, if you're doing a really long book, it's better to do six by nine, uh, especially when you're doing print on demand applications. And that is because it will be a cheaper book if you do a six by nine, uh, you're charged by the page rather than by the size of the page. So you might as well go with the biggest book that you can that still is appropriate for the market. It's gonna be six by nine. So for this one, we're gonna do five by eight. We are not designing a paperback cover today though. That's gonna come later. I'll do that in a later video. This is an ebook cover, but if we select the correct proportions, then we won't have to do any kind of editing or trickery later on to make it, make it fit on a five by eight. Uh, so five by eight is a little bit taller uh, versus wide as far as a six by nine. A six by nine is a one and a half by one proportion. This is a little bit taller. It's like a 1.65 by one or something like that. So here it is five by eight. I always do a black background uh, and that's appropriate for this image that we have here because it's on a black background. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drag the image out. This is gonna be our central image. And what I'm actually gonna do right here is I'm going to, um, I'm gonna flip it. And the reason I'm gonna flip it is simply because those auxiliary elements, I may want those to wrap around to the backside of the book. And I'm just gonna drag the bottom of the image off the page. So here we have a nice big sword. And of course I click the chain link so that it's always in proportion. You don't wanna stretch your images. And we have enough room at the top for a title, a nice big title. And those sparks, if they wrap around the edge of the paperback cover, that's gonna be fine. That's gonna be a fine thing uh, for design. It's a little bit of a touch of quality. Now that we have it there, we're gonna go ahead and place the image. Next, we need to design the type. and. This is gonna be really simple and straightforward. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about some font choices that we have here. S there's a couple of different things that you have to think about when you're doing a title font. 
Um, the font that you choose will convey the genre, but it can also can convey a certain flavors from within the genre. So I'm gonna give you two different font choices for fantasy, for high fantasy. One is gonna be, um, it's gonna be Trajan, Trajan Pro, or any variation of Trajan that you can get on a, on a free font website. That's gonna be a great choice if you want to convey that the book is a little bit more serious high fantasy uh, versus something very sword and sorcery. So if you want something that's more fantastical and uh, more adventure-based, the other option would be Sinzel or Sinzel Decorative. So I'm gonna type in a, a, a title and I'm just gonna call it, um, it's called Forge of Winter. So uh, Forge of Winter would be a good title simply because we have uh, the spark. So there's Forge. It sounds kind of medieval. Winter is a very popular word to use in fantasy. Um, now this is not the correct font right now. Doesn't matter. We're going to be changing all of this uh, as we go. Um, so I'm just going to do a rough arrangement of this little stencil font that I have here. And then we will go and show you a couple different font options. Uh, Forge of Winter, there we go. And uh, as we are thinking about our font, we should also think about how we want to arrange the words. So you can arrange the words in a very, very simple manner, but if we wanna go with a more complex design, I think you can actually uh, get a lot of benefit from having a large variety of um, word size. So I'll show this to you real quick before we go back to the document. Um, here it is, sorry. You can buy my books of music. So with this one, you can see, let's get the darker darker cover. There you go, now you can see it really good. The the and of are smaller, water and awakening are bigger. The first letter is much bigger. So varying the size of the letters with within your title is going to make it really stand out and look like a professional design, rather than just having everything be one size. So I did the same sort of thing on Needle Ash. Notice the N and the A are bigger than the rest of the rest of the type. And that just makes it pop out a little bit more, makes it look a little bit more professional than it otherwise look uh, might look. So I'm gonna select all this, uh, all this text and uh, we're gonna change it away from industry. I'll show you Sinzel Decorative, I think because this is a sword, we may want with a more serious font. So Trajan Pro looks like this, it's very simple. As you can see, you have, uh, it's a serif font, but the serifs are have a smoothness to them and a sharp kind of angle to where they, they terminate. And the letters are all big and it's a great title font. So Trajan is a great choice for more serious fantasy. And you can use Trajan in other uh, genres as well, but it's really good for fantasy. Now, if we go with Sinzel, or especially Sinzel Decorative, Sinzel Normal uh, works fine as well, That's a. it's very similar to Trajan. Um, but if we go to Sinzel Decorative, what we get are all of these all of these little flourishes on the letters. And I'm gonna show you how to actually use this particular uh, font really well. So let's design it in, um, in Sinzel and I'm probably going to put it, end up putting it into um, Trajan. Now, just a little bit of a note, you don't need bold fonts. So I see this a lot with people who are kind of new to designing book covers or just graphic design in general, little graphic design chip, uh, tip. The bigger the words are, the less bolding you need. The smaller they are, the more heavy the, the words need to be to stand out in the total composition of what you're doing. So the title font doesn't really need to be in bold. It just needs to be legible and it needs to be visible in a thumbnail. So if you make it big, uh, it's gonna look better if it has the normal size fonts versus uh, bold. So if you look at bold, bold might look good on your screen right now, but trust me, you're gonna wanna have, um, you're gonna wanna have a normal size font for when you actually do this. So if we're doing this with Sinzel, I just wanna take some time and explain how to use this font. If you have a capital letter, it has a different letter, it has a more, I guess, fancy letter than if you have a lowercase letter. So you can see if I have a capital F, it looks weird. The word forge looks weird. A lot of people don't realize this. So we probably have a lowercase F. Notice it's all the same size. It's just whether it's fancy or not. And then we'd probably make the O capital because you get this little curly Q O with this little, little flourish there that looks great. 
and we could even do it for the G. So if we make a capital G, it has uh, has this little tail here. Same thing with R. Um, you can have a little tail there. Now I don't recommend you do this for every single letter, or it's going to look weird. But just choose one letter out of the out of the word to kind of stand out. Um, I think the O's look really good, and we could do an R, and then we'll just have G E be normal. So the O and the R kind of stand out, and we can do the same thing with winter. Um, so with winter, we can, I like the W's. That's why I use them with water of awakening, but regular W, we do a fancy W. You can see what fancy I looks like. You could play around with this. I actually don't like all of the fancy eyes. And if I have two of these little curlies going together, um, they just don't look very good. Uh, so I might just have just the R to have a little tail on the, on the, uh, not whiner, winter. There we go. So this looks pretty good, and likewise we can have the F. Um, we can make the F have a little bit of a different look like that for the of, for the of winter. And I like to have the of be smaller, of winter. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Um, and from here we can actually arrange the letters in a whole bunch of different ways to get this uh, to get this look down. If you want to go with an asymmetrical look, you could do something like this and shrink the of down quite a bit, like make it very small. People, you don't need the of to be to be big at all. It could be very small. Um, so we do like forge of winter, and we can even like move our sword down a little bit, and that looks kind of okay. Uh, but what I might actually do is I might you know I might size up make the F and the W separate objects and size them up like I've done on my covers before. And that would fit pretty pretty nicely in with the other kind of covers that I've done. Uh, but you don't have to do that. Now, let me go ahead and go back and um, I think we're gonna do this one in Trajan because it's just a little more classic. Uh, and I'm not showing any of the text effects that we'll do later. Um, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Because we have one object like this and it's very up and down, this asymmetrical approach may not look as good. But one of the things we could do just while I'm thinking about it, is we can actually change the angle of the sword if you wanted. And you could have the sword kind of come out at an angle like this. And then you could actually have the um, the title font move down into some of the space of the sword for an extra little flourish. Um, just a little bit of different look here. Uh, same thing, Let's we can actually size this up quite a bit when we do this like this. So you can have it look like that. This is actually kind of a cool design uh, choice, I think. So maybe we'll go with this. If you wanted it to be perfectly vertical, I might do Trajan uh, as a font because I think it uh, I think it has a little bit better look. But for this one, yeah, maybe we'll just do it like that. So we're still filling up most of the visual space. And your author name, of course, is gonna go at the bottom. Um, but I think I like it like at this angle. So I think I'm gonna go with this angle here. I think that looks good. And from here, let's go ahead and we'll shrink this down a bit. Um, the The two words don't have to be the exact same, exact same size. They can be um, different sizes. Doesn't really matter. And you can always select both of them if you want the the fonts to be the exact same size. And uh, go back over here and just select a size like sixty point, and they're going to be the same size exactly. And uh, for this design, there we go. let's go ahead and let's delete the F and the W. And we're gonna make a new one that is F and a new one which is W. So uh, from here, we can really do something like this where we just make the F big and we can tuck the O under the F if we want to, and it's gonna have a little bit different look. Let's, let's see if we can make it really big and really stand out. So if we have a nice big F like this, and you could do this in Trajan, by the way, it doesn't have to be done in Sinzel, and I may just convert it to Trajan later. Um, let's see, what if we did with that big? That might look interesting. You know, you could do it underneath like that. I'm not crazy about that design though, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the normal F. Doing this all in real time, guys. And we can have it like this. And then we're gonna have winter down here. And you can have your text go over the image a little bit, that's not a big deal. 
but I just we don't want to do it too much or we, we start to lose the image. I'm going to size up the, the W a little bit like this. Forge of Winter. And this could be whatever title you think is cool. And from here, we could decide where we want the F, right? Let's select the of. Forge of Winter. There you go. So this is a little bit more designed than where you put the of here, like this. And the W here, winter here. You put the of in a, a couple places. And then we could add a the. Let's add a the. This is basically the, the text design I did from um, Water of Awakening, right? You can see it's very, very close. Um, and I probably wouldn't do it that close except to just demonstrate exactly these design elements. Notice it just pops out a lot more, looks a lot more professional, has a lot more to it. Even this simple image, if you were to have it with this nice classic text, it would pop up, pop out a lot more. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and redo this in Trajan. So let me go ahead and I'll just select all the text here in the layer editor. And we're going to go with um, Trajan Pro. And then from here we can, we can just get rid of some of these random caps, as you can see. And uh, we can actually do a little bit more design here too. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. So right away in Trajan Pro, it still looks great. You know, there's there's really nothing to just turn your nose up at. Um, with Trajan, you have caps are just a bigger version of the same font. Um, so it's really pretty easy to design in using uh, Adobe Trajan. So we could do Forge. I kind of like line up in the middle. Forge of Winter like that and that actually would look pretty good we can actually do a little bit of extra stuff here too like if you wanted that r to be bigger and hang down you could actually just make it bigger uh you know make it a separate object and have that be bigger there's a lot of different things you could do um so i think overall this is like a really classic and simple design right here that you could do um it looks a little bit more like serious fantasy rather than if you did the sinsel decorative it looks very much like uh, sword and sorcery, something that's very, very, um, you know, something that's going to be more fantastical, more, more like an adventure. And let's see here. Go ahead and maybe turn this image a little bit like that. It's probably going to be good. And we may, you know, if we go completely vertical, it's like serious. This is a little bit more a um, little bit more style to the angle. So I think I'm gonna use the angle here. I think I like the angle, okay? So there we go. Now there are some other font choices that you could use. Um, I'm gonna actually make these a group because I'll show you what I'm gonna do later with the group. So these are a group. Um, some other good font choices would be like Perpetua. Let me show you that one real quick. There's a whole bunch. Uh, you could try them out as long as they're a big title font with serifs, you're good with fantasy. So fantasy is always serifs. Uh, science fiction would be sans serif, which would be something like Futura. Um, there's many different variations of that. Let's see if we can find Perpetua. Perpetua is good. Perpetua is a free one. It usually comes with your with your computer. Um, so we can select all this and show you. Actually, we'll go to Perpetua. And you get a little bit, actually, Perpetua titling. Sorry, not just Perpetua. Perpetua titling is what you want. It's a title font. It's usually free. You can get it uh, for very inexpensive. I have a ton of fonts, as you can see. Perpetua titling. So Perpetua titling looks really good as well. Um, but I think Trajan Pro has that just the great balance. It's very legible. All right, now we get to start uh, designing some other elements. Before I do that, I'm going to put in the name David V. Stewart. I like to leave the, the periods off uh, of V. Just I like the way it looks without the period. 
Now we could have that in Trajan as well, but we kind of want to switch it up. So I, the, the font that I usually like to use for my author name is a variation of Cormorant, which is also free. You can get Cormorant for free. Cormorant is a title font. You could use Cormorant for the title as well. It just looks a little more, it, it's not, doesn't signal fantasy quite as hard as like Sinzel or something like that. Or you could even use Sinzel decorative or just Sinzel. Looks pretty good. Just a little bit of a variation. I'm gonna use Cormorant. Um, I'm gonna use, you can use Cormorant uh, Unicase, which I think has a great look. Cormorant SC, which is small caps, which is gonna match what this is. Cormorant has a little bit more intense serifs, uh, which I think looks good for a smaller, um, a smaller word. Or you can do Cormorant Upright, which is gonna have a more kind of loopy look, if you guys can see that. Let's get a little closer so you can see some of these fonts really good on your screen. Um, too far. So it's Cormorant small cap, that's what I tend to use. Uh, infant is just going to have uh, something that looks more like a regular. There's Cormorant Garamond, regular Cormorant, um, uh, Cormorant. Cormorant Unicase I think looks really good for something like this or um, Cormorant Upright will look good for something like this. I think I'm gonna use Unicase just to switch it up a little bit. And then let's go ahead, <coughs> sorry, and size it up. Size it up a bit. So we wanna fill up some of the space at the bottom. So this would be a good book cover. Now from here, we need to be thinking about the meta before we get into the details of uh, stylizing our fonts. So if we just want a black, um, a black cover like this and you don't wanna go any further, that would look fine. We just want to make the text have some color to it um, is probably what we wanna do. Um, just I'll give you some tips for that and then I'll show you how we can actually change maybe the whole color of the, of the cover to make it look even better, right? So um, let's look at that group that we made. We made a group of the title font. Um, and all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to effects and we can do a, um, a gradient overlay. And so what I'm gonna do with this gradient overlay, I'm gonna show you. Uh, if we do a reflected overlay and uh, we can make this look like kind of a steel look, doing a couple of things. So uh, I'm gonna, Oops, I have uh, I have the title font in there too. Let's or the author font. Let's get the author font out of there. Pull that out of the group. There we go. Now let's try it again. Gradient overlay. There we go. Um, we're gonna make it reflected, like this, and we can see we can drag it around like this. It's just black to clear. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna change that a little bit. We're gonna make it kind of an angle like this. And we're gonna go from uh, zero opacity to 100%, but we're gonna put a couple of different stops here. So we're gonna put a stop here and we're gonna make that uh, 100%. And then we're gonna put a stop here and we're gonna make that 0% again, okay? And we're gonna put these stops pretty close together like this. Um, and for this, actually, let's make it, let's dial it back a little bit, 80. And we're good. The whole point of this right here is simply to make something that looks more reflected. And so we're gonna put one up about 70%. And you can see that we're starting to get like a more reflected kind of font look here. And we can also size it down a little bit, get a kind of position it. That looks pretty good like that. Um, and we just, just, I like it to not be completely vertical, which would be 90 degrees, slightly off, like maybe let's do like 90, 96, 96 looks good. So we have this, we can always turn the opacity up or down on this. And now we have a nice black and white gradient. If we want it to be an even stronger gradient, we can actually do a different color. You know, you could do blue, um, I have green here. Some of my gradients have already done purple. Purple would signal the wrong thing. You really want to use yellow or green or just white. So we do a color overlay, just dial it back. And now we have a gold title font. Looks pretty good. Now let's go up to uh, bevel and emboss. 
And from here, there's a couple different ways that we can bevel. So uh, inner bevel is what we want, and chisel hard is usually what you want. Each of these has a different effect. As we crank up the size, you'll see it looks a little bit different. So if you want the maximum amount, it's gonna look like the bevel's coming all the way to the center of the letter. We're gonna change our highlight color to be something a little bit, a little bit brighter like white. Um, and we're gonna choose our shadow mode to be something dark, like a dark brown is what we, what we probably want to go with. Um, now this kind of looks like a muted, muted gold. We can add some texture to this as well. And we want to scale that texture all the way back um, like that. And we could just select something that's going to have just a little bit of something, something to it. Maybe that, let's see, what do we got? That's good. Mm. A texture will kind of help with something like this, I think, to make it really look good. There we go. That's that's one I like. And uh, we can, from this, scale it up or down. If you want it to be really rough, you want it big. And um, you can change the depth here to be maybe just pretty subtle, around plus 26. And then we can scale it up or down. There we go. I kind of like that. Maybe just a little bit more depth. So now we have a texture that we've, that we've added onto it that I think is pretty good. Now from here, we can also add a stroke. I think a stroke is a good idea for something like this. And we can go with like a really bright colored stroke or just make it white. Um, I think something that's more golden would probably be good. We could position it inside the letter if we want the stroke to really keep the letters thin. We can go in the center we can go outside. So outside's gonna make it pop a little bit more and um, we can always size it up or down. I think probably just a couple pixels, maybe three pixels. It's probably all you want for something like that. Boom, now we have a really nicely stylized um, title font with some texture and it, it looks pretty good so far. We haven't even had to add any drop shadows. For the title, all we're gonna add is a drop shadow that's gonna make it pop out a little bit. Um, and we're gonna size that down a little bit. So I like to use a couple drop shadows, one that's color burn and one that's normal. And you can see now it just pops pops right out. Uh, and here we are, now we have a title here. Um, I might for this uh, title group here, I might add uh, a drop shadow, just because I kind of want it to show up on there. So um, just do a normal drop shadow and this'll make it, you know, in case we have an image behind, it'll make it pop out pretty good, pretty good there. Uh, now, if we want to actually, here's a couple of other options that you can do. You can do something like an outer glow to this, um, which will, instead of color dodge, we'll do normal, which will make it look like that. And, and we just size it down quite a bit. So we can make it kind of look like it glows a little bit, softens it up, um, things like that. You can even do a drop shadow that has colors on it if you want to make it pop. But it, I don't think that's totally totally necessary. You can see it just looks a little bit more soft. I think I like it a little bit harsher. Um, I think I'm gonna bring that color overlay up just a little bit and probably make this a little bit, hmm, probably, no, I think I like it there. I might just shift it to orange very slightly. There we go. All right, I like that, that looks good. So you could ship this as a book cover right there all by itself. Let's take it to another level though. So this is the next level of what we're doing. Let's change the background color away from black. I think black looks fine. You wouldn't have to do anything else for this. But let's take it to another level. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna change the blend mode of this to screen. Because it's on a black background, screen is gonna look fine. You notice it doesn't look any different when I change it to screen. But with, if I add another layer, so we'll just add a new layer, control shift in, we'll give you a new layer. And we fill that layer with anything. We can fill it with black, we can fill it with um, white, doesn't matter. So if I, if I fill it with say white, you see that it disappears. Um, 
Let's fill it with black. And then from here, we can actually create some interesting effects. So one of the things we can do is we can create a um, color overlay. So now it's yellow, uh, but we can make it any color that we want to. Let's make it, because we have yellow here, we can actually make it a really deep, dark blue like this. Um, and we can even do this as a as a gradient if we want, okay? Um, and the gradient would actually look pretty good here. A green, you could do purple. We don't want purple, that's gonna signal. Here we go, here's a blue one. And from here, we just turn the opacity down quite a bit. And we can even make this say radial. And so we have this color in the middle that's gonna add to it. And we can go from there. So because this is a dark image, the screen blending is kind of overriding the the uh, the sword. So we may actually want to cut the sword out to get this to work properly. But you can see as we add in, say, a blue a blue texture, we get uh, we get quite a quite a bit different effect. Uh, one that I think is actually actually pretty good. Let's go fill fill this with gray. You can see it's going to change the blending quite a bit. Turn the opacity down. And we can get something that's a little bit more subtle. Uh, I think I like the black better. It'll be a little sharper. Turn the opacity. We can also turn down the fill. Uh, th that'll just show the effects. Okay. Have it be pretty subtle here. Let's turn that up little bit and we can also say take this color just dial it into the darker range like this take, take the second color here or oh, you guys probably can't see that there you go take the second color here and dial that a little darker as well now we have a nice gradient to work with here um, so because this is like this, we can also create a couple of other effects. Let's do maybe inner glow. And we can actually crank this up a bit or actually inner shadow would probably look good. Oh no, see it's doing the edge of the images. So never mind. we're not gonna do that. Okay. So we can actually cut that sword out if you want it to really stand out and we can actually change that color. Uh, I don't want to show all of those steps because we have all these sparks. That's not really going to work out quite as well as uh, as I want to show for this particular video. Uh, but you could do it. You could say cut out this sword and really put it on a on a background like this, um, and you'll get you get something that's that's uh, that's quite a bit different. You can also try different blending modes. You can do darken, um, overlay. It's going to look a little weird. But screen, if you're using something with a black background, will make that black background mostly disappear. But I realize because there's so much black in this image, it's it's going to look a little bit weird blended in here. Um, so let's go ahead and let's go back to normal. Um, another thing we can do here is we can go to um, blending options. And over here, you'll have blend if here and you can actually slide this over and it will get rid of the black most of the black for you but you can see it makes some of the image disappear which is which is not really what we want but you could do this to just get rid of some black like that let's see it gets gets rid of a lot of black um, or you can get rid of the white this is another way that you can get uh, get things to blend really easily Okay, then another option. I think we're just gonna have it be black and that's gonna be our cover design. I think it looks pretty decent. Um, if you didn't like the sword being at an angle, you could always make it up and down and uh, you end up with a, a pretty decent little design here. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you wanna see in the future. That's a central object uh, design of whatever you wanna call this fantasy a more serious fantasy, medieval fantasy. So let me know uh, what you think, and I will see you guys 
next time. Okay, so after I was recording the video, I thought of one extra little thing that I wanted to show you as far as making this text pop out because it looks a little flat. I mentioned color drop shadows. So this is a thing you could do on a black background that will actually produce some really interesting effects is you can, um, like in this case, create a red drop shadow. And this gives it like a little bit of a red glow. Um, you can make the red glow right behind by changing the distance to zero, or you can make it kind of uh, go in a bunch of different directions and kind of spread out from there. If you want it to be very hazy, you want the size to go up. Um, and if you want it to be very defined, you want the spread to go up. And so you can really uh, play around with this and get some cool effects. I'm just going to do one that's kind of subtle and is uh, pretty much just behind, uh, behind the font there. So now it looks like the text is glowing a little bit. Um, and we can actually duplicate this and create a couple of different color. So this is probably too much. But for the second one, um, we can pick a little bit different color. We can go with something a little bit more um, more orange like that. And we can turn turn up the size and turn down the opacity. And we're going to get a, a really just different kind of effect here. Um, something that's just a little bit more just a little bit of something, something for that uh, to make that text pop out. And by the way, we could also do this if this was in one of the other fonts like Sinsel or something like that uh, to really get this to, to pop out like that. Okay, so that is that. And uh, hopefully you guys will find that interesting. If you wanted to add any other additional elements, you know, something in the background, um, you could probably do it, but you probably have to cut this object out to really get it to, to blend correctly because there's so much black on this sword, but I think this looks fine just like that. This would be a good little book cover for um, a simple and easy to sell, maybe short novel. So thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll see you guys next time.